Hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Nilofar Kahri, and uh, today my lecture is on Anglo-Indian and Indo-Anglican literature. Uh, this is included. This is a part of uh, syllabus in BA Part Third in Maharaja Ganga Singh University, and uh, this video can be useful for others as well who had been uh, reading from that perspective. And there is a question. There is a confusion. Students. Very uh, many often uh, they get confused that uh, uh, between Anglo-Indian and Indo-Anglican literature. So I hope it will be helpful for them all. So let's begin. The Anglo, uh, the Anglo-Indian and Indo-Anglican literature uh, are basically related with the description about India. However, both are much different to each other. Two components are common in both, that is, both write about India and the language used by both kind of writers is English. So, this is an attempt to introduce both kinds to the readers or the listeners. So, let's first take the uh, Anglo-Indian literature in consideration. The term Anglo-Indian can refer to at least two groups of people. Number one, those with mixed Indian and British and specifically English ancestry and people of British or English descent who are born in India or living in India. Okay, so thus those who are born in India are known as Anglo-Indian and those who are of mixed parentage are categorized under this title. So India, as we all know, has been for years a had been a colony of uh, English people and hence it was quite possible to find both categories in the country. So under this title there were many who were interested to write about India in their own native language to introduce India to the world from their own point of view. These writers of literary uh, interest uh, these literary artists are known as Anglo-Indian writers and literature created by them is called the Anglo-Indian literature. So there are a few uh, definitions which I have mentioned during this lecture. So let us discuss them. E. F. Oten, he describes Anglo-Indian literature as regards the greater part of it is the literature of comparatively small body of Englishmen who during the working part of their lives become residents in a country so different in every respect from their own that they seldom take root in its soil okay like we all know that uh, if we are we have to live in some other country and we are not comfortable with the environment uh, provided to us by that uh, country that place or uh, we are not you know just sometimes we feel like uh, uh, alien into some other place and we consider ourselves better than them. So what do we do? We want to retain our own values, our own culture, our own language into ourselves. So on the contrary, they strive to remain English in thought and aspiration. The same happened with the English people. So uh, Anglo-Indian literature therefore is for the most part merely English literature strongly marked by Indian local color okay so this is english literature which is marked by indian local color written by the writers who are either born in india or they have been living in india or born of mixed parentage of indian or english uh, ancestry there is one more definition let's just go through the through it pupal singh says uh, broadly speaking the anglo indian fiction includes any novel dealing with India which is written in English. Strictly speaking, it means fiction mainly describing the life of Englishmen in India. In a still narrower sense, it may be taken to mean novels dealing with the life of Eurasians who now prefer to be called Anglo-Indians. Okay, So they, um, according to Bhupal Singh, they, these people, the Anglo-Indians are the Englishmen who are living in India or who are writing about India into their own words. So when we go to the uh, historical background, we all know that uh, British, when they uh, came to the country, it was their intention to have trade in India. They wanted to do business or trade in India. But later, their increasing interest in political and administrative matters of Indian subcontinent 
uh, it made clear that the longest, longest tree of British people urged them to write about the socio-political scenario of the country and present it before the world. The Anglo-Indian community was a cohesive group of Englishmen who functioned in India <coughs> excuse me, in the civil and military services. They formed an autonomous society evolving their own code of conduct and philosophy of life. The most important idea which pervaded their thinking and their way of life was the idea of empire. Probably there is no community of Anglo-Indian literature left on the world as we all know that there are, we don't have the community left on the world now but the literature created by them has been a landmark in the whole literature worldwide and there are few writers who are still writing about India. We have even we have a uh, living legend Ruskin Bond who had been um, still living in India. Okay, So let's move on to the Anglo-Indian literary writings. What are the major writings of Anglo-Indian uh, literature? First, let's move to non-fiction. There has been a tradition of non-fictional Anglo-Indian writing which has served an important background for the Anglo-Indian fiction. The first output of it consisted mainly of books of travel, journals and letters. A journal of Sir Thomas Rowe, for example, describes his life at the court of Mughal Emperor Jahangir. His priest, Edward Terry, wrote about his travels in the eastern India with interesting observations in his relations to the kingdom of Golconda. William Methold wrote about his experiences in South India. Alexander Hamilton has given a very comprehensive account of the late 17th and early 18th century history in his A New Account of East Indies. Robert Homme's History of the Military Transactions of the British Nation in Indostan celebrates the military achievements of English in India during this period. Again, James Todd, who lived for a considerable time in Rajasthan, but he uh, publishes Annals and Antiquities of Rajasthan. Now, let's move to the fiction of Anglo-Indian writers. Uh, very famous Anglo-Indian writer M.M.K., his far pavilions. In sign, Walter Hamilton describes India as a wonderful and mysterious country full of endless possibilities for excitement and adventure, as we all know our country. So this was done of the dominant ideas of the young Englishman who came to India in the 19th century seeking fortune as well as action. Many Anglo-Indian novels show India to be the land where Englishmen can cultivate his heroic virtue. Wow, they felt they you know felt like they can do something heroic in after coming to India. So G. A. Hanty's with Clive in India in times of peril 1899 Rudyard Kipling very, very, very much familiar of the name. Uh, he is a very famous writer who has written Jungle Book and uh, he has uh, also written nursery rhymes like Baba Black Ship. So uh, his novel Kim is a very adventurous and heroic romance which was written in 1901. Then we have Bithya Am Kruger, his Pagoda Tree in 1919. It, they can be kept in the category of romance fiction. Now let's move to E.M. Foster's which is a passage to India written in 1924 it was a kind of travelogue but it describes the relation between the colonizer and colonized and this relationship was actually not a very good relationship everyone knows uh, then we have paul scott's raj quadrate four novels uh, and they contain of the vis-a-vis -vis the jewel in the crown 1966 the day of the scorpion 1968 the tower of silence 1971 and the division of spoils 1975 so these novels encompass the period of indian freedom struggle from 1942 to 1947 the most jubilant period of the raj okay now there is another category of domestic anglo-indian fiction and there are only three women writers who were very uh, considerable uh, and who made significant contribution into the Anglo-Indian fiction. They are Maud Diver, F. S. Thiel and Bithya M. Kruger and together they have produced more than a hundred novels on Anglo-Indian domestic life. So uh, basically these Anglo-Indian writers they were interested in writing fictions but with they have, there, are, there are some exceptions like uh, Rudyard Kipling and there is Henry Torrezio, another name I remember. But he is actually not Anglo-Indian because his parentage was mix of Indian and Portuguese. 
he was born of Indian and Portuguese parents. Anyways, now let's move to the next category, the Indo-Anglican literature or the Indo-Anglian literature. The Indo-Anglian writings are basically Indian writings in English. The evolution of a distinct standard, uh, the body of which is correct English, English usage, but whose soul is Indian in thought, color and imagery. And now and then, even in the evolution of an idiom, which is expressive of English usage. So the Indian, write, Indian writers who are writing in English are basically known as the Indo-Anglican writers. And when we write about our own country, we can express it more better than and we can express it better than the Anglo-Indian writers. Okay, because our soul is Indian, our thoughts are Indian, the colors, imageries, we are all familiar. We are all are familiar with all these things. Okay, so let's discuss who are the early pioneers of Indo-Anglian writers or Indo-Anglican writers. So the, uh, the um, we can include uh, the earlier pioneering works of Indo-Anglian fiction, which was social, historical, detective and romantic. They lack depth and style and technique to leave any permanent imprint. Indo-Anglian fiction was deeply influenced by Mahatma Gandhi. Mulk Rajanan brought to Indian uh, the new technique of stream of consciousness. We all are aware of the term, the term stream of consciousness. Uh, so this is a part of Mulk Rajanan's writing. Raja Rao adopted the autobiographical form of narration. And the credit, but the credit of bringing a name and reputation to Indo-Anglican fiction goes to a few contemporary writers such as Mulk Rajanan, Raja Rao, R. K. Narayanan, Neeraj Si Chaudhary. So they four are called the four wheels of contemporary Indo-Anglian fiction. Other luminaries who have enriched the Indo-Anglian fiction are Khwaja Ahmad, Pavani Bhattacharya, we have Kamla Markande, we have Anita Desai, then uh, Ruth Pawa, Jabwala, Lumber, uh, Mashirans, Mrs. Villa Rena, Kushwan Singh and others. The Indo-Anglian writers of fiction writers were with an eye and hope on western readers. This influenced their choice of the subject matter. That is why the Indian English novel or the Indo-Anglian novels, there are sadhus, fakirs, caves, temples, Vedantas, there are Gandhi, there is Gandhi, there are Rajas, there are Nawabs, etc. To say that, okay. So, uh, because the foreign readers or the people from other parts of the world, they were interested in knowing the Indian culture basically. That's why all these were part of the Indian English writing or the Indo-Anglican writing. So, there are subjects that interested the world. These subjects, these are uh, interested the Western audience. The women writers, especially Kalma, uh, Kamla Markande, Santha Rama Rao, Anita Desai have a fine eye for the urban scene. Bhavani Bhattacharya and Kushwan Singh in different ways give us valuable insights into the pathos of economic impoverishment, misdistribution of wealth and human degradation, degradation caused by the political upheavals. So these are the basic uh, problems of India which actually fascinate the western countries. Now when we talk about the technique of narration of these writers, so we can uh, discuss that uh, the most prominent technique of narration of these writers of Indo-Anglian fiction is the first person narrative. The central character of the hero is the narration of a novel. This technique is seen in many novels such as Raja Rao's The Serpent and the Rope, Manmoha, uh, Manohar Malgaonkar's The Princess, Nantara Sehgal's A Time to Be Happy, K. Natarajan's The Chronicles of Kedaram, etc. The Indo-Anglian fiction has imported the technique of the creative use of myth. Radha Krishna legend is a recurrent myth in Raja Rao's The Serpent and Rope. There is the use of myth in Narayanan's The Manager of Malguri. Uh, in The Old Women and the Cow, Mulk Rajanand uses the myth of Sita's fire ordeal as a part of his technique. Raja Rao has created an, uh, on Indian Sanskrit rhythm in the syntax of English. Raja Rao says we cannot write like Englishman and we should not. We cannot write only as Indians. We have grown to look at the large world as part uh, us. 
Our method of expression, therefore, had to be a dialect which will someday prove to be as distinctive and colorful as the Irish or the American. So, time alone will justify it because we cannot write like them, we cannot speak like them, we cannot, you know, pen like them. So, why should we take so much pain to be like them? Why don't we express ourselves? But we cannot express ourselves in our own language because we cannot make it a, a part of the whole world. So, let us do it. Let's try to write. Time will justify it and we will definitely become more distinctive and more colorful in writing, given, in writing our works. Kushwan Singh also follows Mulkraj Anand in respect of language. Uh, when we talk about the themes of the Indian fiction, the political theme as a matter of choice was very much influenced by Gandhi's role and philosophy. There are so many writers who are influenced by Gandhi. Roger Rao's uh, Kantapura and the Cow of Barricades, K.A. Abbas in Khalaf, R.K. Narayan's Waiting for the Mahatma, Mulkraj Anand's Sword and the Sickle, and some other novels related to politics, especially the post-independence politics, uh, Nantara Sagar's The Time of the Morning, Kushwan Singh's Train to Pakistan, Manohar Malgaonkar's Bend in the Gangs, Atiya Hussain's Sunlight on a Broken Columns, etc. Uh, when we move towards the Indo-Anglian poetry, uh, we can say the beginning of the Indian poetry is known from Derosio, who is basically not an Indian but of a mixed parentage. After Derosio, there is uh, Kashi Prashad Ghosh, Michael Madhusudan Tat, Ramesh Chandra Tat, Toru Dutt, Manmohan Ghosh, Rabindranath Tagore, Sarojini Naidu, Kamla Das, A.K. Ramanujan, R. Parthasarthi and many more till date. We have so many writers and uh, the theme of their poems had been ranged from the social problems, feminism, traditions, the con contemporary pro problems of the contemporary poems, the casteism, the um, poverty, hunger, and the feminist views like those in, written in the poems of Saroji Naidu and Kamla Das. So these are the prominent themes of Indo-Anglian poetry. So uh, students, uh, let's hope that these two uh, terms are now very much clear to you all. The Anglo-Indian writers are those who are of a British parentage but born in India or living in India or a Britisher. Uh, who has come to India or a person who is born of the mixed parentage of Indian and British uh, parents. So, uh, this is known as Indo-Anglian um, poets, writers, literature written by these writers and the uh, Anglo-Indian, I'm sorry, and the Indo-Anglian writers are those who are Indian writers but writing in English. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. If you have liked it, please like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much.